There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. One that for the past 30 years has traveled the world teaching others. A pioneer in America of the fighting science of Savat. One who codified the sports of this fighting style. One who has produced clubs, champions, and continues to develop. Listen to work. Mistake in the martial arts, I believe, 
is what I what I term co-opting certain pieces of martial arts. And I'm saying co-opt, like it's very common nowadays to have people. I mean, any MMA fighter trains Muay Thai, right? Uh, and that's almost always the kicks they throw, right, and everything. But most you'll find rarely land within the authority. Why is that? Because this is the way they approach it. Right. Same, similarly, uh, what you'll find today, today we're going to work on two skills, basically. Um, and we're going to have, you know, we're going to take your progression and look at some stuff. You may not, you may or may not get the feel of it for, for yourself. Uh, that may take some time. Uh, but those are going to be, we're going to work on the kick, we're going to work on the knee. Uh, I have preached 30 plus years about using the knee. And, you know, I've got pushed back a great deal of my career on it. Like, you know, I, I told you, you know, I came back in 91, I think it was. Um, the first USC was maybe 93. Uh, probably one time really wasn't part parcel of it to maybe 95, 96. Uh, but in that time, you know, that in, in that time span, even well after that, well into the early 2000s, you know, people uh, would always tell me, you know, that they, yeah, I'm saying even instructors, you, you know, say that they, that you, there's no way you could use the knee in, in, in MMA, right? Because, at, especially at that time, it was dominated by wrestlers, right? Uh, and that, yeah, there's no way to get your hands on it, but of course there is, right? You, you just have, yeah, similarly, um, you, you know, like I, you may or, or, or may not know, you know, the, the last fighter I trained was Tim Kennedy, he was a top 10 fighter for the UFC. Uh, he fought for two championships, so of course he didn't win either one. And he fought uh, Jacare for Tiger's Fight Force, and then he fought Lou Rocco, you know, for the title. Strike Force, Strike Force, Strike Force, uh, got lost by the UFC. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, where I was going with that, also edit that out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, where I, you know, even though you have this, you know, real concentration of people that, you know, there's been no lack of teaching in the United States, no lack of, um, uh, like I tell you, you know, there have been champions teaching in the United States since the 70s. So why is Muay Thai so from the United States, right? And so there's a lot, there's a host of reasons. So you can't just take things part and parcel. You have to give it the time to mature, uh, you know. And that's what most people, they, you know, they don't do. The, the one good thing about nowadays is that there's more of a fighting culture. That, you know, I met Paul, like, when we were good friends, like, there was no fighting culture. Uh, like, I got trash internationally because, like, it was too hard, you know. Uh, but, you know, I just say, like, well, how the hell are you going to teach, uh, you know, contact, you know, sport slash art without contact, you know. It'd be like trying to teach someone, you know, we've all heard maybe of white collar boxing, right, but that was never meant to prepare people to go from to right? Similarly, more tight, right, like, uh, you, you really can't train this without contact uh, of some sort. So it's learning how to, you know, to, to balance that, uh, but the thing that, you'll find probably overall eventually is that, you know, uh, you know, Muay Thai designed it if, you know, live, dream, practice in the East, you know, when you transplant that into the West, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it doesn't, there's not a one-for-one -one for things, so you have to make some changes. All right. So that, right, got our track four. Uh, so I lived in Thailand for over two years. Uh, which was extremely hard. I don't know how they do it. It's got to be easier now because, like, I, I, I was, you know, talking about like Muay Thai training now has become basically a cottage industry. Right? Back when I lived there, as I said, it took a month to even find a camp because, you know, again, oh, that was the real edge. You got the, the warehouse with, you know, they're training fighters, right? And that real estate is so expensive, they're going to put them in the worst. You know, like you could not, you could not find these places unless you physically knew about them. You know, um, and even, even more so than, than, than that. So, but today, you, you know, someone can go on the internet and get an address and t even talk to them. And there's even an infrastructure 
that allows them to come in and say, okay, I'm going to pay you $100 we go to, you know, to Phuket and South, South Thailand and train, and I'm going to give you $100 a week, and I'll take your money and do some, do some training. You know, some stay longer, may fight, may, you know, integrate more into the actual fight sort of scene. Uh, but, you know, back when I lived there, you, you could you just couldn't do that. Not just that, but even if you found a camp, if you were lucky enough to find a camp, they wouldn't take they wouldn't take you right because they're there to fight. Yeah, you know, they're there to be fighters. They're not there to get your 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 money, right? Because even that, like most of the people that are in the camp, it's not their camp. Right? they 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 work for a, the owner, and the owner, you know, uh, his interests are financial. Yeah, you know, financial. So he never produced enough where. You know, there wasn't enough money, it was just too much trouble. So most of they had no interest in having you know, foreigners. But, you know, you could go work out in a camp and they just kind of ignore you off to the side. But to actually be part of the camp, you had to be invited, if, if you will. And so I fought out of two major camps in Thailand. I fought for a, fight, for a, uh, a camp called uh, Kitikasen. Uh, you guys probably have never heard of it. Um, they, uh, you know, when I was there, part of that camp, they, they, uh, they, there was a, they had a former uh, Lumpini Stadium champion who won a world championship in boxing at UBC. Uh, and actually, I, I'm friends with another one from the Pekin D camp who was uh, wonderful. You know, uh, he was WBC champ until he lost to Manny Pacquiao. So um, great, great fighter. Uh, and so uh, there they also had uh, some stadium champions. Uh, it was a tough life. Uh, I ended up, from there I went to uh, study at a sword fighting school. It's called Kutai Sawan. Uh, Kutai Sawan is kind of its own little thing because Kutai Sawan was like the, really, they named the school after uh, this very famous Wat Kutai Sawan, you know, Wat being a uh, a monastery, uh, a British monastery, and uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, basically the monks taught the people how to use you know we weapon fighting. And of course, that's where Muay Thai evolved evolved from. So I trained at the school that had leads, or not directly leads back to that, but it was actually it was a royal sponsored school. I, so the team sponsored this, you know, the school. I was the first uh, foreigner ever to have, uh, you know, to be allowed to uh, teach online online weapons. So I think some superseded that eventually, you know, that that rank. Uh, but Paul Cruz died, uh, you know, Paul Cruz died. I mean, I left, I left Thailand in '91. Paul Cruz died probably about '95. Yeah. So I, what what can you tell me about it? again? Uh, we're also when we do this. Not that you're a Buddhist, but you know, I love, I love Buddhism. I, I'm actually, you know, actually, I'm an ordained Christian pastor for the Presbyterian Church. Uh, I was a chaplain for a decade uh, for hospice. Uh, so, uh, but there's this, there's this same in, you know, uh, in Buddhism, in India, in India is, I think. Uh, Eha Pazico, something similar to that, right? And it means, you know, come and see. And that's what Buddhism is predicated on, is your ability to see what's there. That you don't need an intermediary. You don't need enlightenment to know what to do. You don't need to be taught some moral code to do the right things in the universe, so to speak. Right? And I say that to extend that into your martial arts practice. When you see these, what do you see? Right? Again, Buddhism has this wonderful idea of seeing things as they are. Not as you want them, not as you hope they should be, not as they will be one day, but rather, what do you see now in this unfolding moment? Right? You have to apply that to all of them. When you look at these, what do you see? Anyone? What do you see? Right. From a weapons perspective, I'm saying. Like, Short yeah. weapon, or long weapon. Correct. Very good. Very good, excellent. Now, what can you tell me about the characteristics of short and long when comparatively? That's got range. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. What else? I guarantee you guys, you know, 
Weapons don't, you know, basically, you know, weapons really don't emerge uh, like from technology, usually, like they emerge from people, they emerge from culture, right? The culture very much dictates the weapon, right? And it has, uh, you know, it will tell you a lot about their style of fighting, right? It's not, again, inferior spirit, right? It's their style of fighting. It's what they practice, what they're exposed to, it's what they've trained for, right? Here, you can tell the very shape of this, we, we don't have to have uh, you know, a, a, a universal level course to tell us uh, you want to keep your opponent away from you, correct? What do you think this says in that same sentence? That's right. On the shear, we look at this, this tells us a lot about Muay Thai. You know it or not. The sword stroke in, in uh, Puri Gabon, which is the weapon art that predates Muay Thai, and Muay Thai is just a, basically an unarmed subset of the, uh, of the weapons art. Uh, uh, and the main weapons, really, of the system are the single and double sword. Single and double uh, dot. There's also saber. There is saber mm -hmm. as part of the, the G star list. So this is kind of what the the sword strip looked like, right? That we're not because where it is. This is the basic stance, right here. I'm going from single, single sword here. Uh, now, you see any similarities? What do you what do you think? What can you see from this stance? Same. And it's almost the same kicking stance. That's right, right. Exactly. It really is the same stand. This is what my strike. I'm going to cock up and then use my whole body weight that way. All right. Cock there. Up. All right. Up. Okay. Now, uh, notice again my whole body moves. Everything's committed to it when I decide. I, you know, like I tell people, this isn't 100% true, but it's still basically true. You know, which is, you know, a lot of coaches today still, you know, I got your shoulder fake a bit like, you know. Mm -hmm. Ties don't bite on fakes. You know, just don't. Because they're in a range that uh, they're, expe they're expecting to be hit. They're expecting to take something. And they're not going, and, and the biggest thing is they're not trying to position themselves to avoid it. They're not trying to stay, okay, I'm safe, 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 okay, now I'm yellow, yellow, oh, it's dangerous, but no, right, like I'm possibly going to be pressing, 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 get back to defense. From this position, I'm, I'm waiting, you know, it's not, I'm not counterfighting, I'm not waiting for you, I'm just getting into the range, I'm going to fight my game, right, I have again predicated on my uh, belief that I can get that close and stay that close to you. Right. So again, this is completely, really the sword strip. Completely analogous to the round kick, right? Up, strike, there. I can also up and strike coming through that way, right? And from there, strike through there, or up, strike through there, okay? Uh, over there, step out that way, right? Step out, okay? And notice, if I did that, uh, step out, kick, I don't really care where I land. Right? I just want my body weight going. The difference in when you saw me kick him was I was using his body to stop me, to actually prop me up. <clears throat> so when I'm kicking, I feel up like that. that. The strength of this kick is in extension. So when I'm here, it's not until I go here, this way, that he gets the, the, the transfer of weight and power. Right? Uh, so, uh, but I can't practice that way. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes, sir. A lot of most guys similar to that. You can't just necessarily look at it and say, okay, I'm going to start practicing. I'll give you a great example. Also as well, I'll show you, you guys know what the teeth is. The teeth is front, front kick. Muay Thai front kick. Probably just like right. <coughs> And to watch, I'll show you how you do teeth like, you know, uh, shadow boxing, the teeth like, but I live there by life. You start like this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Why? Because the kick actually probably looks a little bit more like this. That way, hip extension. There's nothing to stop. Right. 
So it's going to look different when I try to do it. Right? Same thing like with the, the cross. Right? That's really long here. If you're shadow box, you right across you as long as there's nothing stopping it. If you try to hit all your opponents, it's pretty far away. Right? You have to right, it's meant to be to develop like that, right? Again, pain, transfer, turn, turning of the hip and the shoulder. That's what it's meant to teach. Not <laughs> You know that I want to get you at the, you know, at the terminal end of the move. Right. Absolutely. From wherever you are. Right. Actually, what you should be practicing about 80% of the time. But as I said, most of you won't. Yeah. Okay, guys. Make sure you, uh, you've got to make sure when you. Throw the kick on step number two, right? On two, that where your foot lands, you are no longer, your opponent should no longer be straight in front of you, right? Because if they are, that means you've turned in a circle, right? And turning in a circle is not going to allow you to let your weight move through them. Let the weight go. Just like I got it right, like you should not end up, when you take that step and throw that kick, you should not end up on a straight line to your opponent. Right? You should be on a tangent. That's it. Keep it going, guys. Take it easy. I want you, right, we're not going for uh, trying to. Uh, I'm tall, but I'm not. Pushing my back out that way. See, my, my, my back's not that way, not, but this way, right? Instead, I'm tall, really kind of from the chest up here. See how my back's rounded? See how high my shoulders are? Right? My shoulders are pretty much even with my ears. So, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you can't, I like my shoulders, this is about hands, about right where the eyebrows are. Most of the time, like you can tell, like these are fair, almost parallel. They are rarely this way. Like they're up, and they're not just up, right? Like that. Like if I was to raise these up this way, right there, up and forward. Right, and this way, look, really creates really tight, tight, tight defense. Right? If you can do that, just like you're doing, right? You can, you can just try to do a reinforcement like that. Yes. Like so. Really, very, very strong defense. But words of Professor Buitron. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo, Buitron Academy, 956-401-4868, savat.biz.